Welcome to Hood Champion Boxing and Sports. And boxing, you find a way to win or find a way to lose. Look, we know that MMA fighters, they want an opportunity to get huge paydays. A lot of these MMA fighters think that they're better fighters than boxers. That's because they train to submit, to kick, to elbow, to do all the things that boxers don't do. Conor McGregor put it best when he, as far as describing what MMA fighters think about boxers. They see that as half of a fight. And you know what? When you, when, and, and I just have to be fair. Boxing in MMA, boxing is a, a, using your hands as far as boxing is a fourth. It's not even half. It's a fourth of what they do in MMA. That's 25% of the fight in MMA. So they're right. Absolutely. At the same time, you, if you want to come and get a huge payday, you got to come over to boxing to come over to this, you know, 25% of a fight, right? Because MMA fighters training their hands too. But just because you're good at MMA and you're a champion, it doesn't mean you're going to catch, you can beat all boxers if the boxers come over to the MMA world. Uh, most of those knockouts that happen in MMA is from the stand-up. And a, a guy in the MMA world who tries to prove a point by going hand-to-hand -hand with a boxer, more than likely, he's going to be on the bad end of, the, of, the, of those exchanges and get knocked out. Now, what you see is Kamaru Usman, the Conor McGregor's, the Francis Ngannou, and so many other MMA fighters, right? So I, there's a laundry list of them. Half of the names I couldn't even call off the top of my head because it, you wouldn't even know them either. But those names that are kind of, you know, that, that, those are the big names, the elite fighters, those well-known names. Those guys are looking for the crossover bout. They look at what Conor McGregor did. That changed his life. Conor McGregor fighting Floyd Mayweather. And then Conor McGregor did some things that these guys need to pay attention to. And as a businessman, some wise investments with the liquor and everything else. So Conor McGregor is a, a billionaire now. But if these guys want to grow their brand and make the most money, they should try some things outside of MMA other than boxing. Because if you're going to come to the boxing world, you got to do what the boxing promoters dictate, what they tell you. You don't come over to boxing and decide that, you know, you, you're going to call, you want to come to boxing, you want to call the shots, but you want to do it in an octagon with modified rules. Look, if you want to box, then box. Kamaru Usman, man, you know, I just think he needs to tone it down because he's, to me, he's making himself look foolish. So much so that he goes on to say that our fans know who the best is because the best fight the best. Not running high to fight nobody with those plastic belts and call themselves super champion. Keep quiet next time. And if you need lessons on how to save that dying sport, let me know. I've got Dana on speed dial. Okay, well, we all know boxing has been around for quite some time and it's not dying. Okay? But th this, these MMA fighters, I don't understand how any of them could come to defend Dana White. When you look at these, his business model is set up for Dana White and his team to make the majority of the money and for his fighters to get, you know, crumbs. And those are just facts, man. A guy like Kamaru Usman, Francis Ngannou, they should be making a few million each fight. But it doesn't happen. And I get it. With uh, Dana White and the whole MMA thing, they have, you know, a bunch of fighters on their undercards, and everybody has to get paid. But the model is still set up a kind of way to where the majority of the money goes to Dana White and to the the, the, the whole leadership of uh, the UFC. It doesn't go to the fighters. The fighters aren't. It, there's not a 50-50 split. There's not even a 64, uh, not even 40-60 split in favor of the fighters. I don't even think it's a 30-70. To be quite honest, I don't know, so I should stop talking, but the way it seems, it's almost like a 20-80, 30-70 type split as far as what the fighters get and then what goes to the uh, the UFC and, and, and Dana and the rest of his, the leadership. And I understand. These guys have a lot of things going on at the same time. There's a lot of costs associated that they have to cover, but it, to see Dana White as a, a billionaire, and see his fighters who are struggling. That's a foul. I don't think Bob Arum is a billionaire. I don't think 
what's his name, uh, Don King was ever a billionaire. If you're sitting on 500 million after all these years of doing something, that's great. And your fighters are all going on making millions. That that's cool. But when you your fighters, your top fighters aren't even making a million, not even making seven hundred fifty thousand dollars a fight. Now I'm not talking about the Conor McGregor's, okay? But a guy like Ngannou, ridiculous man. That this man isn't making ten million dollars a fight. Absolutely ridiculous. But if the fighters want to come over to the boxing world, to the dying sport, Steven Espinosa. He normally doesn't get caught up in this crap, but he's tired of it. So he goes on to, to reply to Usman, if you're receiving a fair share of revenues, spot on. You wouldn't be embarrassingly stalking Canelo on social media. Spot on. You're an accomplished UFC champion, yet you're begging to participate in what you call a dying sport. Spot on. Why? Because that dying sport pays way more than your own. He hit the nail on the head. And... This is where I can't understand how these guys will still sit there talking about getting Dana on speed dial. Dana White can have fights every week and have fight cards every week because he takes all of that money and reinvests it back in the company to make sure that as far as their brand stays relevant and they make a lot of sales on all their products and the merchandise. So Dana White, what he's doing in a sense is smart. But at the same time, he's, he's sacrificing his fighters' pay to make sure that the UFC brands, the UFC's brand stays relevant. And it's, it's a bittersweet thing. So those, those guys can fight every couple months if they want. But the amount of times they fight in a year will probably never equal what one of the top fighters in boxing uh, get paid off of one fight. And probably won't even two, three years of them fighting wouldn't equal that. And that sucks for them because those guys are tough. They can fight. They're committed. They're disciplined. They're just underpaid. So for Steven Espinosa to step up and start speaking on this issue, that says that, you know, even he's getting annoyed. What I'm waiting to see is Dana White really come out and really have some open discussions about it, which he's, he's, he's touched on it a little bit. But, I mean, really come back and peel the layers back and make sense of all this because there's a lot of questions. And fighters are frustrated, and fighters don't really want to fight for him anymore. But he kind of has them by, kind of has them by the by the by the ankles because they the contracts they sign. But I've been watching boxing a long time, and I watch MMA on occasion. But you, I can't understand how the top fighters in MMA, champions and non-champions, but I'm talking about the most popular fighters over there, aren't getting paid at least one to two million dollars a fight. I'm talking about at least. Especially the heavyweight champion. That is madness. So anyway, more to come on this. I think I must, because I, I keep seeing these guys coming out, you know, talking trash. Like, you call out Canelo. Yo, come on, man. Canelo has better things to do and he's not interested in those fights. Canelo would fight Jake Paul before he fought somebody from MMA in a boxing match. So they need to stop. So anyway, man, uh, like and subscribe. More to come. Keep safe. But Steven Espinosa obviously is tired of hearing these guys complain and shit and, you know, crap on boxing because the amount of money that, that they're able to pay their boxers. And, you know, they have pay-per-view too. UFC has pay-per-view. They got merchandise and stuff they sell. Boxing doesn't have all that. But the pay-per-view numbers and the business model is set up to make sure that guys in boxing get paid handsomely, especially those champions and guys at the top. So the UFC, I think, have a pretty decent model, but I just think there's some things they can learn from boxing that where over time they can start to make those refinements and improve the pay of their fighters. I mean, it's not a personal thing, but you need to look at their fighters and listen to their complaints because they're all being underpaid, and they look at what they go through and what boxers go through and what they're paid and what boxers are paid, and they're supposed to be disgruntled and start scratching their heads. But anyway, man, y'all keep safe. Appreciate you watching the video. I'm in the breeze.